Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, hi, Nabuska, brother Kask. Thank you, precious Father. You have kept this for our generation to explore. Thank you for bringing us to the place of truth and exposing us to the things you're exposing us to. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Hey, man, praise God. Hey, let me tell you this truth. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. You see, most times we, we use the world events to measure. Oh, we say there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars. This is like external thing. What about the things he's going to be doing in the church? He's going, to bring, he's going to be bringing us in to the depth of truth. And he's going to be straightening out our theology and our living so that we will be ready for him. See, to us, when we see those signs, then we know that he's coming. I'll tell you the truth. The past few weeks, the consciousness of his coming have been so deep in my heart. I'm telling you the truth. How? Not because I heard a voice saying Christ is coming. Oh, no, Christ is here already. Praise God. But we won't say Jesus is coming. See, he didn't finish his work when he came before. Please understand me. He did it. John said something. He says, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Have we called for that daily bread? No, we haven't. Praise God. I just got reminded. I've not called for that daily bread. Call. See, I'm, I'm, I'm too... The Lord will help us. Praise God. Join me right now as we make demand for our daily bread. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So, he, John said, he will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's his job. He was reading when, 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 when Jesus walked this earth. He went to his hometown, okay? And he was giving the book of Isaiah to read. And then he was reading Isaiah 61. And he got to a verse and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the Bible says he closed the book. Now, in Isaiah, that statement did not end with the acceptable year of the Lord. The statement continued with the word and. So if the scroll was written in verses, then I don't know if it was. That statement did not end. So Jesus must have stopped in the middle of a verse. Why did he close the book? See, he was announcing his assignment. Okay. Now, the prophecy about him had said, he will preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of his vengeance. Okay. So he, he got to that part where it says, he shall preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. You find this in Luke chapter 4. Now John also spoke about him, that he will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now many believers don't know this yet. Those are not the same kind of baptism and they are not for the same people. Holy Ghost baptism is for God's children. Fire baptism is for those that will not be saved, for the ungodly. So we don't know these things. We just match the whole thing together. So Jesus never spoke of fire baptism when he walked this earth. There is no record of him mentioning him baptizing with fire. But he spoke about baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, 
there's this argument if water baptism is is still valid if what about we have any uh, have, have have any spiritual significance today the answer is no no and the reason i say it's no not just me saying it this is something i've carefully looked at i've asked the lord is concerning his mind about and i've gotten a response from the lord the truth is water baptism has no spiritual significance and the reason is very simple it was not part of the new testament doctrine now why do i say it's not it wasn't part of the new testament doctrine john was given the assignment to baptize with water it was only john that was given that assignment and the reason the assignment was given to john to baptize with water listen to me please was because there have been a prophecy concerning the coming of Jesus and the timing he would come. And in that prophecy, it is stated that he will come out of the water, having been baptized. Okay, so that's why John's ministry was very peculiar. Now, that's one. Number two, to John, that was the way. He was to identify the Messiah that he came to introduce. His job was to introduce Jesus, okay? So he was told by God, go down to Jordan and be baptizing people there. Now, as you're baptizing people there, one day there is one that will come to be baptized because he will be led by the Spirit of God. There is one that will come to be baptized and when he comes, you, John, you will see the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove or flattering on him like a dove. When you see that sign, announce him. He is the one. So it was John's assignment. Okay? So that's the reason John went down to Jordan. He didn't start his ministry in Jordan. He started his ministry in the wilderness. Remember? And then he came down to Jordan. And because he knew the time this season had come. So he began to do his ministry at Jordan. He was led by the Holy Ghost there. So he, he was baptizing and baptizing. And one day, his cousin, because Jesus was his cousin, praise God. He saw his cousin come down towards the water. And he said, oh, that's my cousin. You know how, you know, like, oh, see my cousin. But then something happened. He suddenly saw the Spirit of God hovering. Now, now I know the movies have made it look like why Jesus came out of the water. The Holy Ghost, they saw the dove came and landed on his shoulder. That was not what happened. <laughs> Nobody saw anything on Jesus except John. Yes, John was the only one that saw and he didn't see it after he had dipped Jesus into the water. He saw it when Jesus was approaching him. So John was careful. Everyone that came for his baptism, he was careful because he was looking for one. God did not tell him it was his cousin. God just told him that there is one that will come. God, God can be hilarious. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Why did you tell me he's my cousin all this while? Is God. I mean, I'm doing some work and I see my, you know, you know how I could have fought with my cousin, could have just, hey, you, what are you preaching? Say, yeah, please stop it. You, you that like to sleep in the temple, you know, all those things. And then suddenly I'm doing my assignment and I see this, my cousin. It was only John that saw it. And when he saw it, he knew he couldn't, he couldn't say, ah, can he be? This, this is my cousin. He couldn't say that. Because that's all he was doing ministry for. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. So, he said, ah, uh -uh. it's you? Then, you're the one that's supposed to baptize me. Because John knew that he was coming with the real baptism. John knew that his own was fake. He knew. He told the Pharisees, he says, I indeed baptize with water. 
for the remission of sin. But there is one. Look at the phrasing of that statement. You know. He should tell you that his own was fake. When I mean fake, I'm, I'm not saying he did it by himself. I mean, that's not the real baptism. So he said, there is one that's coming after me. He, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So he saw Jesus and he said, nah, I'm not supposed to baptize you. You are the one that's supposed to baptize me. And Jesus said, ah, ah, I know, but please let us fulfill scriptures. And, and, and I'm sure John, with shaky hands, you know, dipped Jesus into that water. And he came out. And in shock, he, he was looking at him walking away. And, wow. This thing is true. The times that all the prophets spoke about, they are before us. This is the Son of God. Auntie Mary's son is the Son of God. I, I, I think John went home that night and was like, how? So the next day, he saw Jesus walking by and he was with his disciples. He was sure now. So he says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was convinced. I'm sure he must have gone back to the Lord and the Lord said, yes, that is him. You didn't do something fake. You didn't do anything wrong. He's the one. But you know, you wonder how John after all that experience, still continued preaching. That beats my imagination. And that's the reason we still have people baptizing with water even till this day, because of John. And that was an error from John. You see, the moment Jesus showed up, I believe, I believe, and if you think about it too, and tell me, I believe after the introduction of Jesus, John should have collapsed his ministry and go work with Jesus. I believe so. Probably that must have been his own test from the Lord. Realizing that your cousin is the Messiah, can you subject yourself to the word of God? And probably John John had an issue. I'm not saying in truth. I'm saying probably John had an issue with that. And it got to a point, he was baptizing people and Jesus was busy on the other side preaching. And John, John the beloved, was careful to say, Jesus never baptized anybody. I, with water now. But you see, his assignment, follow me, his assignment was to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, in, in that first part of his ministry, he told his disciples, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And that happened on the day of Pentecost. Okay. He is coming again to fulfill the second part of the ministry. That's when he's going to fulfill that part of the prophecy of Isaiah that he will preach the day of the vengeance of our God. Now take note. I am Akashaya. I pray God give you understanding. Take note. His first coming. May God give you understanding because I'm going to say something in parable now. His first coming, he spent three and a half years doing his ministry. And he ended that part of the ministry three and a half years. Take note of that. He ended that part of the ministry baptizing them with the Holy Ghost. He is coming again. Now, I have told you before, now don't imagine that if you go to heaven now, you'll see someone sitting on the throne and it's called Jesus. No, you will not. But that Jesus, one will refer to as Jesus, 
he will come back to this earth again. He will come. What's he coming for? To fulfill the second part of his ministry. Will it be another three and a half years? Keep that somewhere in your mind. I'm speaking in parables. John wrote things. And he says, those that have understanding, let them hear. Anyways, it's not for today's talk. Praise God. But Jesus is coming back. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And this time, when he comes, just like the first coming, it ended with baptism of the Holy Ghost. When he comes again, that part of his ministry will end with baptism of fire. Not for you, a child of God. For those who did not receive him. Those who did not believe him. Believe me when I tell you, that time is not far from now. That's why I'm teaching you the things that I'm teaching you. Because Jesus is coming soon. So soon. Praise God. So soon. It's not so much about rapture. But he's coming. He's coming. You remember when he left. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Please allow me to read this to you. This is some great digression. But I've got to show you. I've got to show you. Book of Acts, chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, so they, they knew he went up, physically speaking now. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, stood by them in white apparel. So they were looking up. And then suddenly, they turned, and there were two men wearing white, standing by them, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you have as you saw him go into heaven this same jesus so a day will come kayuma labrato salitai he will show up again he will come he will come this is the testimony of the angels that came to arrange for him to go up. <clears throat> and they gave him the message. He said, they said, in the same manner as you're seeing him go, you will see him come. Now we think, you know, people think the whole world will see one day one shining star will just be landing on earth. It's not everybody that will see him, brothers and sisters. The same way, it's not everybody that saw him when he ascended. Only those who were looking for him saw him. Same way, only those that are looking for him will see him come. So I'll tell you the truth. Jesus will be on earth. And people will not know. That's why if you don't know his voice now, you cannot know his voice then. I'm telling you the truth. 
Don't think he's going to wear white and be walking as a Kayada brother say. Jesus will come on the earth. He will come. He will preach. He will teach. He will bring us to the fullness of his knowledge. But remember, I said, only those that are looking out for him that will see him. Let it not be that you are in church. Jesus will come and you don't see him. My time is up. <laughs> Praise God. I pray for you. That the Spirit of the Lord will open your heart to see the truth of these things I'm sharing with you. And that you will strengthen your resolve to follow the Lord and win in this life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust me, God's plans for you, they are great. And that's why I'm sharing all these things with you, for your benefit. And take heed that these things enter your heart and they are stored by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.